station when you come up? Station uh, Camp Arab first, and then we went on to Rock Hill, and then it went down to uh, Dunray. Right. What was it like? Were you in town? It was just uh, two mile baby, just uh, dining area it was a 40 man tent, and the uh, kitchens were. about exporter service personnel from the Irish Army, Irish Defence Forces, uh, the Gardaí and the Customs, and anyone, including their uh, partners, who served on or along the border between 1969 up to 1998. It is about trying to tell a sense or create an awareness of their story, and it's about trying to Give an insight of what it was like, the conditions, uh, what it was like in 69, 70, what kind of conditions they had to work under. Maybe you're way out 
Jack Pointer on duty and just said, no, I say at home. We did protection of the minister down there at that time, it was the first Patrick. Right. And uh, after your duty there, you just got no dinner or no dinner on the leaves for tea or nothing. You know, there were tough times when you look back now, they were very nerve wracking times. And I went on then, uh, and before my patient was up, I ended up in the Patrick's Hospital in Dublin. And right. I was just the stress of the job. and. I, I just wasn't happy for the last six months of the job. Right. And I went on there and I started the exercise and I started, uh, I started training and I just couldn't cope with it. Right. Ended up then. And I, I remember then the, the seller recommended then take a wee taste of protein food. And, I took a test for the next thing I ended up in the hospital. Right, okay. Build up my muscles, you know. Right, right, okay, okay. I have big regrets now taking on the job, you know, too stressful for me. Right, okay. My marriage breaking up in 85, and, and uh, wanted, I couldn't stick. Couldn't stick. I was very suicide attempt, suicide three times. And, right. And, uh, That's I came out, came out that job, time. The stress of the job, and right. away from home, and, Right. All these Republicans knocking you all the time, meet you in the street and push you after foot pass and all that. Right. Okay. Right, Ed McHugh's the name, and my rank was a corporal serving in Lifford from 1975 to 1996, 21 years service. The conditions were, uh, to put it mildly, they were horrendous. Right. They were infested with rats and things coming into the billets. Right. Uh, because there were drains and all going along the blocks. In the checkpoint out of Clough Finn, there was a tin roof and a, and a, like a cow shed. It, it was horrendous. It was an old uh, barn uh, used by a local farmer. And uh, we took it over with the tin roof. All stone walls. Uh, no, no form of heating at all. Gas. Uh, Hayden cylinder with the fumes coming off it was horrendous. Uh, very, very damp conditions. Right. And, uh, and, and once again, it fed, fed just by rats and right. things. You know. yeah. Yeah, well, I wasn't just a big drinker, uh, but there were certain pubs in the town that were restricted from to um, one, particularly in the town that we weren't, weren't supposed to go into at any time. And uh, the drink culture in there, my practice was very, very bad. Same with a lot of people had uh, drink problems. It resulted in domestic problems. They had home with their wife and their kids were wanting for food, and because their husbands were uh, someone bloody depressed from drinking, uh, when in the army and the conditions and everything else took its toll. And then they were doing day on day off duty, so that the family life was virtually no. Yeah. Well, whenever whenever I arrived in Rock Hill, I was very quickly straight onto the border. And uh, we were on the border almost every day. If it wasn't patrol or weekly patrol, call out or whatever. Uh, very, very little social time, but um, it was good fun. It was comradeship and all the rest of it. Were, I was in my early 20s and, you know, the fun was good and all the rest of it. But... Uh, as time went on over the years, it became more stressful from the point of view that uh, the duties were heavy and they were made heavier by the fact that a lot of people weren't doing duties, a lot of people went sick of duty and on a day off that you thought you had a day off, all of a sudden on a Sunday morning they landed at the door to pick you up and take you, you know, to bring into your duty. That was one of the major problems as far as I was concerned. Your time was never your own. Well, I don't think the army dealt with anything whenever it came to the welfare of men, for instance. You know, like a, a, many, many men that worked along with me and, and maybe did the did various courses along with me were breeding an alcoholic problem, same as myself. I read one and that was one of the main reasons why I left the army. 
Uh, but with regards to the welfare of men, I couldn't see any welfare situation at all in the army. Whatever, whatever piece of uh, consolation or whatever else you would like to call it, you got it maybe from the likes of Michael McCormick at the medical hut or something else. But I mean, you got no relief from anybody else. And the problems, I mean, like everything else, uh, you know, family problems do arise when. Um, when something goes wrong at home and all the rest of it, and it was a major, major issue to try and get time off. I mean, you know, like you could be talking about maybe seven or eight days in Rock Hill or seven or eight days in patrol or seven or eight days doing whatever you're doing. And then if a child's sick or anything's going on at home, it was, it was an international incident to try and get a day off. people and he was a I was asking him about about the the, the feeling that I've got uh, is about the the pride that people have been in, have been uh, as being an ex serviceman, right? And the other thing is that, that I've also felt the anger that people have. Do you wanna talk about that? Do you, you know I mean do you feel that there's pride that you were in the army? Yeah, yeah, but you know I me. Mean, you you wouldn't you wouldn't knock it out of your history. Oh, we were bad, yeah. You see, there was this, there was, this, there was a lot of guys in it that shouldn't be in fucking charge. That's as simple as that. Right. You know. Right. I know. A week ago, the time they tried to blow up Catlin Falls. Right. We were sent out there that time. Right. Some guy tried to blow it up. That's the reason. That, that's the reason the guard went on that. Right. He was killed out there. But. Um, we were sent out there then. Right. You see, before that, everything was very laid back because we were really doing nothing. Yeah. You know what I mean? There was no decision about what you'd be doing. No, oh, that was the first time we got into conflict then. Right. Uh, we didn't come into conflict, but that's the first time we, the, the whole thing had to be spruced up because. Right. I know as a wild change in these officers, they all fucking predator fucking hard to be. Something would happen out there, they say. And right. There was a guy who used to go to my lawn. No, there was all the all the CEOs come from that on the six months or right. five months or right, right. change change around like place. Right. But when they landed you see they went up the road roads and went along when they came out and checked in yet night and all that when she had to the day, you know. Right, right. More or less the sign catch went out. Right. See if you're asleep on duty or drinking on duty or any of that. Some of them even jumped over the yeah. jumped over the gate at one stage, I think some fucking officers. I'll tell you, and my, all my kids, and if any of my kids is watching this, they'll, they'll realise this. An incident happened in my house one night, and it was basically my kids, there was money on the fireside, or that mountain piece, whatever you call it. And I stood all my kids up against the radiator in my house, and there were we like stepping stones. I had six children, and like we stepping stones. And one by one, I walked past them like an officer or an NCO would take them on parade. And one of my daughters turned around to me and says, Daddy, she says, there's never an argument in this house until you're here. I walked out of that room. I went upstairs and I cried. And for the first time in my life, I realized that I had affected my children because I wore a uniform. That the job I had done had made me treat my children in a manner which was not a way a father should treat them. 
I have no problem saying that. Because my kids know that and that's where I come from. It's like where I was then, where I am now, where I can hug my kids and that kind of stuff.